In this lesson, we're going to learn the theory of caged and the practical applications of it on guitar. I'm not big on learning theory just for the sake of it. We're going to learn this thing and we're going to learn how to use it. And this is going to be a two part series, maybe even a three part series. Today, we're going to figure out what caged is all about. And then in a subsequent lesson, I'm going to show you how to practice it so you can actually use it, you know, how to apply all those things like arpeggios, triads, pentatonics, and all that other stuff that the cage system unlocks on guitar. So be sure to like and subscribe if you want to be notified when that one comes out. We start off with the five chord shapes that we all know and love. C, A, G, E, and D. We have those five open chords and we have to turn each one of them into a bar chord. A bar chord is basically an open chord, but instead of using open strings, we pretend that our first finger makes the open strings. So we make a bar anywhere on the fretboard with our first finger. I'm going to do it at the fifth fret. And we pretend that those are the open strings. And we have our other three fingers to make those basic chord shapes. So we can make the E shape, the A shape, the D shape, the C shape, and the G shape is a little weird, but not too bad. So we have five bar chords made up out of our basic shapes. And all we have to do is arrange those bar chords in order to spell out caged along the fretboard. But before we can do that, there's one other key element that might be obvious to some of you, but it's worth mentioning anyways. When we take any one of those shapes, we have to put them in a different spot on the fretboard and we're going to get the same chord with all of them. So for instance, with our E shape, our E shape bar chord, when my first finger lines up with the eighth fret, it makes a C chord. And then for my A shape, I have to put it here to make a C chord and so on and so forth. So I'm going to take those five bar chord shapes and turn them all into C chords. Let's just, if that sounds confusing, we're just going to do it right now so you can see it happening. I'm going to start off with the C shape and I'm just going to play the regular C chord because why not? It's right there, you know? So I get to play the C chord in the normal spot. We could pretend we're barring, <laughs> but we don't need to. So the C shape in its natural habitat makes a C chord. Next, we have the A shape and A's root is on the A string. Our finger lines up with C. That's the third fret of the A string. And that's the exact same root that our C chord started on. Now we're starting our A shape on that root and we get a C chord using the A shape. The C shape and the A shape share a root and that's going to come in handy later when we learn to put this thing in a ton of different keys. Anyways, moving on, next we have the G shape and we're just going to take our G bar chord and we're going to slide it up until our ring finger is on the root note C on the thickest string. That's the eighth fret of the thickest string. So our G shape is making another C chord and now we're going to do E. So we have our E shaped bar chord and we line up our index finger with that same root that G came from, the eighth fret of the thickest string. And we have an E shape making a C chord. So for all of these, you can see the shape is different, but we're putting them all in certain spots to create a C chord every time. Finally, we have D and D's root is on the D string. You know, the D chord's root is on the D string. And we just go up and up and up until we end up at C. That's at the 10th fret. And we make a D-shaped bar chord. And a little shortcut to find that root is when you have your E-shaped bar chord, the root of that, you just go up two, two frets and then two strings. And that'll be your root on the D chord. And you can just make your shape straight off of that. And now, just for completion's sake, when we get to D at the end of caged, we're going to go back to C, or really we're going to the next C. So the next C is right here using the C shape bar chord. Kind of hard to play on an acoustic without the number of frets, but there we go. So my C is on the 15th fret, and this is our C shape up one octave. I could keep playing caged all the way up the fretboard like that. A, G, E and so on, but you know, we're running out of space. So let's just review what we have so far. We took the C shape, A shape, G shape, 
E and D. And then we ended up back at C and we played them all in order and we connected them to make five different C chords. Another way to look at it, something that you're not really exposed to as a guitar player, is that it really only takes three notes to make up a C chord. The C chord is just the notes C, E, and G. Every piano player knows that because it's so simple on piano, but on guitar, things look kind of convoluted and it's not as evident. So all these caged shapes that we're playing are just highlighting those three notes all over the fretboard, C, E, and G. Let's just reverse engineer that. I'm gonna take the blank fretboard and I'm gonna write out every C, you can see them all there, every E and every G. So those are all the C's, E's, and G's on the entire fretboard. And I'm just gonna do some connect the dots and draw some shapes connecting them. You know, we're basically covering up all the C's, E's, and G's on the fretboard. And they just so happen to make our five shapes. You can see there are a couple outliers and we can get those ones when we play arpeggios, which we're gonna do in the next lesson. But for now, this is really all you have to take in. We have the five bar chord shapes. We connected them in a certain way and they gave us all the C chords on the fretboard. And at this point, you might be wondering, what's the point? I know how to play C down here. Maybe I'm pretty good at the C bar chord here and there you go, I'm kind of playing all over the fretboard. I'm good. What do I need to know all this stuff for? Well, each of these positions is an entire suite of guitar information. With the caged system, we can think of each of these positions like a file folder with all the other fretboard stuff that we learn. You know, when I first started learning guitar, I learned so much. I learned my modes, my scales, my pentatonic scales in five positions, triads, bar chord shapes, arpeggios, and I never realized that they all tied together in this really simple way. Using caged as a home base, as you explore all those other topics, you're gonna be able to bring it all back to this and have like a little container in your brain to organize it all. You know, so you just know that in this spot of the fretboard, here's all the modes, scales, arpeggios, triads, blah, 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 blah. And they all attach to one of these five shapes. You know, these are like the skeleton or the structure for how fretboard information can be stored in your brain. I wanna show you what I mean, just so you can see for yourself how useful and effective this is. You're gonna pick a key and apply the entire caged thing that we learned today. So for example, we wanna play in a band and the song that they're jamming is in the key of A. We used caged to create an outline of the fretboard in the key of A. A, G, E shape, D shape, C shape, back to the A shape. Then we're gonna pick one of those positions. I wanna play something higher up the fretboard. So I'm gonna do it right here using the C shape between the ninth and 12th frets. This is making an A chord because my pinky is on the root A. And from there, we can propagate an A arpeggio just by following the basic outline. Or we could play triads, the pentatonic scale, major or minor scale, or we could superimpose another mode onto this by borrowing from another one of our cage shapes. Like if I use the G shape in the same spot and all the scales that come up with that, I could play A Lydian. You know, and the way that you can kind of sum this all up, it's like each of these positions is a file folder that has all those things in it and caged is the file system. It's like your desktop. And this lesson was simply an explanation regarding the concept of caged. When it comes to actually learning how to do all that stuff, I have a ton of really great tips and exercises to help you internalize it that I'm gonna go over in the next lesson. So please like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified about when that next one comes out. And if you haven't grabbed your copy of my free ebook, I have a link in the corner for that. You'll also see a link to my courses. I have a ton of courses covering a variety of topics. You can check those out as well. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.